We're doing it, man. All right. So good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we're finally making this happen. Yeah, I agree. I ran into you WrestleMania week, Mm -hmm. WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, Tampa. Yeah, and we're like, we need to sit down and make this happen. Yeah, I was a little surprised that uh, you asked me to do something like this. Come on. I was more surprised that you were like, hey, man, I watch your interviews. Absolutely. All the time, man. All the time. Big fan. Um, I just love pro wrestling, man. And uh, the way you um, do your interviews, which is like kind of like... You answer good. You ask good questions, but you keep it lighthearted and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's pretty dope, like that, man. And we're in like a very professional podcast setting here. Look at I this. I know. I feel fired up right now, man. <laughs> we're so. at Slingshot House in Santa Monica. Absolutely. And then you're going to be doing some stuff with GCW this weekend in Las yep. Vegas. It's a big weekend for you. Yeah. Because as we sit here right now, your episode has not aired yet. No, Dark Side of no. The and I have not seen nothing but maybe the little clips they put on online. Yeah. I've seen not the episode or nothing like that. So I'm going to be watching it for the first time, what, like everybody else. What you know? were your thoughts when they reached out to you? And said uh, they at first, um, um, you know, I turned them down, man. I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to put my life out there like that. But um, after I sat down and talked to uh, people I trust and love me, and, um, you know, they said it was a good idea. And uh, I changed my mind. I said, let's do it. And I'm kind of glad I did, man, because... Them people are, are, are very advice. They were very nice people, man. They were really cool, and they treated me great. And um, I was happy I did it, man, really. You've got a hell of a story. Yeah. I mean, inside the ring, outside of the ring, and dark side of the ring encompasses everything yeah. that you do. And I want to I take this back for you. What was your first ever... Uh, I don't know, first ever introduction to wrestling? Oh, it's like everybody else, man. Uh, big NWA fan, so okay. you know, with that, sitting down at six oh five TBS, watching, you know, the same old Ric Flair, Lex Luger, you know, Horseman, all that shit grew yeah. up on that. NWA, I loved. WF was like, ah, uh, but I will watch it because I love pro wrestling. Um, you know, I had my bigger brother Chris, um, and we would just wrestle, and I had my cousins, and we just wrestle in the yard. And, you know, I was always getting beat up because I was the younger one, you know what I mean? Until I got my weight up. But, uh, you know, introduction's the same, man. And, you know, you love pro wrestling. And uh, But uh, it was like um, once uh, ECW hit, man, it was like, oh, God. Because I stopped watching. I stopped. I fell, fell out of love with pro wrestling around the early 90s when WCW was kind of getting corny. yeah. yeah. WF was already corny. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm fucking watching TV and some random channel in Philadelphia. And all of a sudden, I see these guys going through tables and all this stuff. And I was like, what the hell is this? And and they got me back in love with it. And it was awesome, man. So, you know, shout out to ECW. Were you like a daredevil of a kid before uh, that? No, man. Not at all, man. I'm, I love baseball. I played baseball all my life. I was yeah. a sports junkie. Love sports to the day, man. And, uh, but uh, just, you know, I loved wrestling, man. You know, and my brother loved it. And, like, all my friends loved it. And, you know, we, we did the backyard thing where we had the trampoline. But we always took it a level up, man. We would, like... um set up the trampoline and then we would like set up bar wire around the trampoline have no rope bar wire oh my but God. what was cool is um while we were in high school we would like um hand out flyers and everything and then we would charge and people would come and pay tickets five dollar ticket and we have like hot dog stands man and people would show up yeah we put like a whole venue on we had our own merch and everything you know it was hardcore backyard wrestling hbw you were like an entrepreneur back when you were a teenager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and my brother, man. Um, so it was dope, man. You know, we would have our own videotapes, and uh, we would, um, you know, give them out to the school, you know, to the kids in the school, and they would fucking watch it. And they were like, yo, you guys are crazy. <laughs> yeah, you are crazy. And, uh, you know, what was kind of cool is um, the wrestling coach seen it, and he was like, you got to be on the team, man. And, and um, I wrestled my 12th grade. Hmm. And uh, I What loved, did you weigh? What well, did you on that uh, where team. was I? Yeah. Oh, I was like 220. You were re- you wrestled at 220? Yeah, I was oh, heavyweight, wow. man. Yeah. And um, I just fell in love with it. I always watched it on TV. Um, but once I did it, I was like, wow, I should have did this my whole life, man. I wish I did it when I was five years old. I love this shit, man. It's just you versus another man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. one-on-one. But you've got to realize how juxtaposed those two worlds are, Nick. Yeah. Like the amateur wrestling world is all about like you know, playing by the rules, basically. Mm-hmm. And yep. the type of wrestling that you do is the exact polar opposite of that. Totally opposite. 
you know. But uh, it's okay. You know, um, I started listening to um, um, Kurt Angle's podcast, which I fucking love, man. Yeah. And he just busts it down, man. And it's cool to hear how he went from the yeah, you know, the amateur style, which it's not even an amateur, man. It's a professional style, man. I don't, you know. To, to the transition into pro wrestling, how, like, he got looked down on and, you know, all his peers didn't like that style and shit like that. So that was pretty cool. But, yeah, I wish I did that my whole life, man, because the training was awesome, man. I went from, like, I was probably 240 in high school, 220, 220, 240. Yeah. And once I started training, man, I got down to, like, 210, 215. Yeah. Like, you know, muscles started coming in. And I used to beg the coach, like, man, let me wrestle 215. He's like, no, we need you a heavyweight. So, but. If you did that your whole life, do you yeah. think that your style now as a pro wrestler would be more technical? Um, or do you think you'd still oh, love Oh, well, listen, matches? my favorite style of wrestling is technical wrestling. I love technical wrestling, man. That surprised a lot of people, I'm sure. Yeah, I love it, man. And um, I love when it's done right. And, um you know, I was a big fan of um, Japanese wrestling. I did a lot of tape, you know, I'm, I'm a little older, so I was back in the day with the tape trading days yeah, yeah. And, and everything like that. But once I found the Terry Funk and uh, Cactus Jack IWA match, <laughs> it was over after that, man. Right. But I still watched the Super J Cup. I love that, you know, uh, Shinjo Otani is my favorite uh, Japanese wrestler of all time, which I got to wrestle twice which is so fucking awesome. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, I just love all styles, man, but the technical style, like, like, uh, like the new, new school guys, like, uh, 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 Kenny Omega and stuff like that. And, and guys like that, man, I just, I love their work and shit, you know? And, uh, uh you know, another, another good one is who is actually my friend who I'm so proud of right now is, uh, Drew Gulak. Mm. He is the technical wizard, man. You know, and I just love watching him fucking doing his thing in the WWE right now. And you, it's so awesome. You've got to understand, though, how many people would be surprised to hear this. Yeah. With the st style of wrestling that you're famous for. Yeah, yeah. I love that shit, man. And uh, um, actually, I owe him uh, a receipt, man. So uh, once he gets, uh, you know, <laughs> somehow we can get in the ring together, man, I need to fucking wrestle him one more time. And he knows the reason why. Hopefully he'll listen to this. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah. I think there might be a lot of people that don't think you could even have a technical style of match. Yeah. Um, if I really dedicated myself, I think I could do anything I want. If I sure. put, my, put my mind to it and, and be very motivated and dedicated to it. But um, I'm really trying to put this deathmatch stuff on the scene. I really think it's starting to get people are starting to understand it now because we actually have people who, are, who can work the deathmatch scene that are wrestlers. Yeah. You know, back in the day, it really got looked a uh, frown upon because all they thought was uh, pick up this thing, hit them over the head, and that's all you see. Yeah. But now you're looking at it like guys are in there working their asses off. And I just think it's another art form of wrestling, man. You know, and look, you had an exploding barbed wire match on fucking TV. Yeah. So it's come a long way, you know. John Moxley had some really nice things to say about you in this episode, yeah. saying that you are one of the best storytellers in there, regardless of the style of wrestling that you do. Yeah, yeah, man. I try to tell a story. I try to, um, you know, I try to engage the fans and everything like that, man. I sh you know, um, Moxley's not my favorite guy right now <laughs> because he wants to come out here and, you know, take over my shine and hit me with a couple DDTs and really <laughs> fucked me up, man. You know, that bundle of tubes sliced my head wide open. And but uh, are we talking about Tampa here? Yeah, we're talking about Tampa, yeah. man. So, but um, I always like Mox. Um, be honest with you, uh, when I got locked up, I was in my cell and I see Moxley for the first time, and I was just so proud of him, and I'm fucking freaking out, and I'm telling my cellie like, "Yo, that's my fucking boy right there, man." <laughs> He's like, "You don't know that motherfucker," and I'm like, "Yes, I do, man. That's my boy, man. Actually, I wrestled him. Actually, I carved his ass up." You know what I mean? And uh, it was just so cool to see him fucking shine like that, man. This is when he was in WWE as Dean Ambrose. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and they came out as The Shield, and yeah. and I seen it for the first time because, um, you know, we didn't have cable in there, but we had, you know, channels in there, and, you know, of course, SmackDown was on uh, regular TV, so I got to see it, and then once I seen him, I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Like, um, you know, uh, Blotter that would come up and visit me all the time. And he was like, yeah, fucking Mox got signed. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, I'm one of them guys who, who um, 
uh, I'm not a hater. I love when my friends fucking succeed, man. Yeah. So when I hear that, I was just so excited for him. You know what I mean? Then to actually see him on TV come out yeah. and actually get the push that he got. And then uh, I was just so proud of him, you know. But I knew he had it in him, man, because uh, once I wrestled him once, I was like, man, this dude's, this dude's got it, you yeah. know. If he just starts putting a little more things together, man, he's going to go. But I didn't think it would be that quick to get signed, but that was awesome, man. So so if you have a trampoline with barbed wire ropes okay, yeah. when you're a teenager, yeah. what's well, the trip to like the Home Depot look like when all you're right, so what buying it is, all that It's stuff. not Home Depot. Okay. Uh, we, we went to a farm. And bought uh, barbed wire off this uh, guy who owned the farm. So we take these poles and we would bang them into the ground. Okay. And then we would wrap the barbed wire around the poles. So it would wrap around the trampoline. So it would look like a no rope barbed wire trampoline match, you know? And we would go in, man. You know, and this is legit and this, barbed and this wire. is real barbed wire, man. It's You're not bending down the barbs. I would never snip my barbed wire. I've never snipped barbed wire in my life. It has always been real in every match I've been into. And if someone tries to snip it, I tell them, don't you ever fucking snip my barbed wire, man. This shit's real, man. And that, and that's what separates our death match, like GCW. Yeah. You know, all the glass is real, man. All the barbed wire is real. There's no fake shit. There's no Hollywood glass in there, if yeah. you know what I mean. I know what you mean. You know, like that's that sugar real, glass. Yeah, that's real glass, man. It, you know, it just has to be tempered glass, you know, so it... So it it shatters, yeah. you know, it won't poke nobody in, you know, we're not trying to kill each other. I mean, it looks like we are. Even though it's called a death match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which, you know, <laughs> been there and done that with the, with the death, but, yeah, you know, but, you know, it has to be tempered glass, but other than that, it's real glass, man, and then everything's real, and, and I think that's the way I want it. Oh, man. Yeah. So what was the first hardcore spot you ever did? Oh, God. <sighs> And I'm guessing it was so, backyard. Well, yeah. Okay, if you want to go are, back. Are we talking? Was it a light tube? Was it barbed wire? Oh uh, no, it no, no, it was definitely not light tubes. Light tubes came later. Okay. Um, I would probably. I, I would. I mean, like, what a chair shot. I mean, would you call that hardcore? I guess that that's that's I, like the gateway drug. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, I would. I would say the barbed wire. You know, I've been thrown off the roof of my house. You know, we did spots off there. We you know we did the we did the fire. Where we lit the tables on fire and we yeah. did the choke slam, you know. We're, but uh, I guess the barbed wire fucking would be my first shit. Did the first time you did it? Did you go, oh man, this is for me? Yes, absolutely. Or did you go, man, this really hurts a lot? Um, or both? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I know, I knew it. I loved it. Yeah, and I remember like, um, if anybody knows my brother, man, he, uh, you know, God rest his soul, he uh, he always had the win, man. So you always take everything so seriously, and I'm more laid back, you know. And I'm, you know, unless it's like my career now, but in the backyard, it's not a career, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he would whip me so hard in that bar wire, and I remember I hit that bar wire, and like I flew into it and got tangled all into the shit, man. And uh, I was like, damn, man. But I was like, yeah, I'm all right, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm all right. This shit's cool, you know. So how does it go from the backyard to getting paid to do uh, this? So this is a funny story. So we started <laughs> handing out the tapes, you know, to all our high schools and sh shit like that because yeah, we went yeah. to the same high school. So the guy I grew up with, um, shout out to Ace Robinson, had a tape and he gave it to his dad and his dad was linked to NWA New Jersey. Okay. From back in the day, Dennis Corluzio and a couple other guys. Um, Donnie B, I think, is another guy. And he gave... Uh, he. Um, you know, John Zandig seen the tape, and he had a school. And uh, he invited us to the school after he seen the tape. And the funny part is, is uh, I had a baseball game before I can go down there. So I had to play the baseball game and then shoot over there. Okay. So I couldn't find the building, man. So I missed this train and shit. <laughs> yeah, my brother was so mad, man. I remember we got in a fight that night, man, a fist fight and shit like that. But I made it the next day, and... Uh, you know, I picked the back bumps up quick, man. We picked that shit up quick. Yeah. And uh, he knew he had something, you know. And then we just practically lived at that gym. I remember uh, I remember, I would go to the school till 10 o'clock, run home, get a shower real quick, and get to my job at ShopRite overnight at 11 and work 11 to 7. And that was Monday through till Thursday. Man. Yeah. And then and then I was playing baseball games on top of that. So, so you knew pretty early on you wanted to be a pro wrestler. 
Oh, I knew it. Yes, absolutely. Did you know early on you wanted to be a deathmatch wrestler? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I wanted to be a hard... Well, deathmatch were... I wanted to be an extreme wrestler, hardcore right. wrestler. I wanted to be ECW-style wrestler. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I wanted to be. And then... Um, you know, and then you always want to take it up a notch, and that's when the light tubes started coming into play. Were you the first pr person to bring in light tubes? Nah, I think the Japanese were. Yeah. I remember, um, uh, God, I forget what match it was, but I remember the one guy threw it at him, and it got stuck in his back. I forget what match that was. Yeah. Okay. It was crazy. Um, I believe I was the first one to introduce the stable gun death match. Me and my brother, we did a ladder, um, break the barriers, they put on a show, Break the Barriers, where it was all these independent companies on one show. And CZW was just getting started as a company. You know, we changed from a wrestling school to a company. So we knew this was a big match. And we tore the fucking building down. The boys hated our guts, man. I remember that shit. They hated us. And, uh, but, uh, and we had the staple gun up hanging up high, and we had to climb the ladder and grab the staple gun. And, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What match do you think you're best known for? Um, wow. That's some good, mm, wow. Well, I'm known for, for the one where I got the cut under my armpit where I died. And, yeah. Uh, you know? And uh, I wrestled seven days later, if no one knows that. That's insane, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I went to... Uh, you wanted to finish that match, which is crazy. Yeah, I did. I wanted to thank God. And she's an awesome lady. And I called her a bitch on tape, and I feel bad. I apologize to her. She was an awesome lady, man. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted them to tape it up. Thank God they didn't, man, because I'd be, you know, we wouldn't be having this interview right now. And, um, you know, I got flown in, and then um, I got released to the hospital on Tuesday... But they had that bag under your arm where it's draining the uh, blood and all that stuff. Oh my gosh! I got yeah. that taken out on Thursday with the thirty staples, and then I wrestled Saturday. <sighs> yeah, man. So it's just you know, and you, you gotta listen, man. You gotta love this business, and if you don't love it, you're gonna find out real quick, and it's gonna eat you alive, and you're just gonna go get another job, man. But. I know I love this business. It's in my blood. I've been doing it forever, man. So This may be a strange question, yeah, but it a... feels like the obvious question. Mm -hmm. What kind of insurance do you have? Um, I have state insurance, man. I just, and like, it covers, like, death matches? Um, I don't go to the hospital at all, man, to be honest with you. I can't tell you the last time I went to a hospital after a death match. I don't, can't remember the last time I got stitches from a death match. Uh, the last time I got glued up was uh, at Tampa because uh, Josh Barnett, um, I went to use the shower, and he was, at, you know, in the room, you know, um, and he's like, uh, let me glue you up. And I was like, I can't say no to Josh Barnett. He's the fucking man. You know <laughs> it what was I mean? his show, yeah. yeah. It's pretty badass that this badass dude wants to fucking glue me up. But I, I don't get glued up, man. I just make sure I take care of my cuts. I make sure I, I keep them clean. And and if it's really, really bad or if I got a really deep one, then, you know, it gets bad after a while. Then I got to go to the hospital. But I don't go to the hospital or nothing, man. What hurts on you right now as you're sitting here? Um, I'm good, man. Yeah, yeah, but I'm sure your threshold for pain is um, way different from mine. I don't know, man. Like, my calf was really killing me uh, from that injury, but it's fine now. Chris, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. I wake up every day, and I got no problem getting out of that bed or nothing like that, man. Mm. You know? Um, I mean, if you want to go get little, in little things, like my neck don't turn the right way all the way, you know? So I got a little bit of that. Probably my elbows are really messed up. You got a lot of scars on your Yeah, elbows. they're really oh messed God. up. So, um, but it's like, other than that, you know, my knees don't bother me. Um, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess I was blessed with, 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 with healing very well. How did you get to a point, though, where you decided, I do need to start taking painkillers? Oh, man, Jesus. Uh, I didn't even have that story where, like, I get an injury and I took them, um, I don't know, man. I was smoking weed, and, and the guy was like, you want to try one of these? And he's, I was like, fuck it, yeah. And well, we're talking like a Percocet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that might have been smaller, like a Viking or something okay. like that. And then I liked the feeling, and then, you know, you know, it works, man. And you're like, yeah. oh, yo, can you give me some more of them? And then, you know, um, and, you know, you can't take one or two no more, and now you're taking four or five. And the crazy part about the fucking painkillers is, is that it creates pain. 
if no one knows that. Because I had lower back pain. I was like, damn, man, when I was taking them pills. When I stopped taking them pills and started working out, that all that pain went away. Huh. So I thought I had like a back injury, but really it creates pain in your body, man. It's it's weird. I I, I don't understand it, but it's the truth, you know. How did it graduate from painkillers mm -hmm. to going, oh, heroin's even cheaper and it's the same feeling? Um like you just said it. <laughs> it's cheaper, really? you know. But uh I didn't psh, I didn't do too much of the, uh, of the dope. I got locked up pretty quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, it's just cheaper, man, you know. But I only did a little bit of that, you know. But I I couldn't even tell you where to get it. My buddy had it, and I tried it, you know, and shit like that. But uh, yeah. Do you not go to the hospital? Is it like a pride thing, or you're just like, I don't need it? Oh, yeah, it's a pride thing, man. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, I take pride in not being able to go to the hospital unless I really have to, man. You know, I want to be able to be, um, I want to be able to fucking make my pain and, and the threshold of pain or the tolerance, if I'm saying it the right way, to be top notch, okay? Yeah. So if I start going to the hospital every time, I think it's going to mess with me mentally. Like, you know, damn, man, you can't handle that shit or you can't handle that? Or what yeah, the fuck, yeah. you're going to the hospital every time? Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's just something in me. Even when I was a kid, man, I would never go to the hospital, man. I'd be like, fuck yeah. that. You know, but... Nah, I never go to the hospital unless I really, really have to, you know, like the cut under my armpit, shit like that. Well, that one made sense. Like, you literally died in a Yeah, I died. Match. Yeah, I died, in, I died in the helicopter. They brought me back to life, thank God, you know. Um, but think of how apropos that would be, if that is how you went out. Yeah, I would have loved it, you know. Thank God I would have went out like that. But thank that. God you didn't? Oh, thank God I didn't, you know. And, um, you know, there's two things that um, it might sound crazy, but thank God that I didn't die, and thank God I went to prison, man. Really? Yes. I mean, I, I, just prison, like, I was able to sit down. I was able to work out. I was able to meet my fucking Eastern Bloc crew. When I go out there and say Eastern Bloc, that's me and three other guys that we watched each other's back, and they were good dudes, and they and they taught me like shit, man. One taught me how to work out. The other one just, just had this knowledge in his head, man. And the other one was just a tough motherfucker, man. And they, and they taught me shit. And I was able to sit down and, and I realized that, damn, I do love. Because I started going to pro wrestling. I started wrestling and I didn't like it. But I would just go for the fucking envelope. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. I mean, I would like it a life. little, but it was like I was getting tired of it. Yeah. And then once I got locked up, I was like, damn, I fucking love this shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, Chris? When they take it away from me, I was able to sit down. I was able to think about it. I was able to figure the business side out. Yeah, yeah. I was able to figure my character out. I was able to figure a lot of shit out. You know, maybe I didn't need the fucking seven years. You know, maybe I could have had a year or two and I would have been all right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? You want to go in there and rob a bank? You're going to go do some time, you know? Yeah. So. Did you think that through before you robbed oh, a bank oh no there was no thinking it was i woke up one day man um i was down on my luck man um but really down on your luck yeah really really down you know people were tired of my shit you know and, and you've been uh, kicked out of where you were living yeah which is bullshit man i would never do that to one of my friends i don't care what he's going through and it was really cold out man and uh the funny part is, is I went in one bank and I pussied out and I was like, oh man. And I walked down the street yelling at myself and I went in the next bank and robbed that motherfucker, <laughs> you know? And then I fucking, and then I went around the fucking thing, took my clothes off and had on the other clothes. And as I'm leaving, a cop's right there at the crosswalk. And it's one of them crosswalks where the pedestrians get the right away. So he let me get the right away, but they didn't like hit the button yet. You know what I mean? I was really fast on that shit. Yeah. So I just walked right past them, man. You know. And then I just went down the street, and then like as he left, I was like, Phew, gone. Do you understand how ironic it is that you walked to the ring wearing a bandana covering your face? Yeah, I know. And then yeah. you robbed a bank with your face well, out. For yeah, I know. You know, I get, I get, you know, teased with that shit sometimes. Moxley pointed that out in Dark yeah. Side of the Ring. Well, uh, I, I could give you my rational of Please. it. Of is, I didn't want to go in there and get caught without s spending that fucking money. I wanted to go in there, get the money, get out, be able to go enjoy the money and spend it. I know I'm going to get caught, man, because guess what? The FBI and the cops and detectives, they're really good at their job. Yeah. 
They don't okay? want people robbing eventually, banks. Eventually, even if I had the mask on my face, eventually people are going to go, that's Nick Gage, man. Look how he's wearing this fucking shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Eventually, it's going to come out. Yeah. My plan, my thought was, get the fucking money, get out of there, go enjoy yourself for like a week or two, and then, you know, take it from there. Did you think at all, like, how long you might be locked up for? Uh, no, nah, I'd never been in trouble. I mean, I had little punk-ass priors, man, but no, like, jail time or nothing like that. No, nah, I, di I didn't know anything about it. Wow. I just knew that um, I'm going to go away for a couple years, you know what I mean? What specifically so, did your notes say when you went into the bank? Uh, and do you remember writing it out? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wrote the note in the bank. So I went on up, like the back of like a deposit slip yeah, or something. Yeah, I went to the deposit slip and I wrote, um, "Give me the money. Um, we can put this out now. I have a gun." Yeah. I tried to say that that I didn't write that so they could knock some time off, but and uh, I thought I was the nicest bank robber until I had to yell at her. Really, I was. I was like, "Calm down. It's okay. You know, yeah. Just give me the money, and I'm at it." You know. And then she was just like, Ugh. "I was like, give me the fucking money." You know what I mean? I had to. You know, and I felt bad doing that. And she, uh, you know what the funny part is? Uh, she had to, she quit her job right after that, man. You know what I mean? Which I feel bad about. Yeah. But my punk ass lawyer that they gave me, because if you don't have no money, they give you public defenders. Yeah. Which, you know, you might get a good one, but nine times out of ten, you're going to get one that sucks or wants to just cut a deal real quick. Played out, yeah. And, and this guy's fucking not arguing nothing for me. But he wants to argue the hundred and fifty dollars that I gotta pay the girl. So I whispered in his ear and I said, "Sit the fuck down now." And this then, is in court. Yeah, this is in court. The first time I went to court, um, this is how shady that these people are. Is I never got um, ah, what the hell is that thing called? You you get a piece of paper and it has everything in there. Um, like the uh, police report? Or? Yeah, it has the police report. It has everything. It's a um, I forget what it's called, but if anybody's been in trouble, they know what I'm talking about. It has uh, uh, everything in there. Uh, your interview with the police, all right. that shit. And uh, I never got it. You're supposed to get it. And I'm already in court, and I never even looked at it yet. Mm. And this guy's fucking cutting deals then all of a sudden i look over and it's sitting on his fucking desk yeah and i start reading it and i'm like wait a minute i didn't say that i didn't do that so in court i start freaking out yeah i'm like fuck this i ain't taking the fucking deal this is bullshit i didn't say i was gonna fucking shoot her and all that shit man i didn't say any of that you know and this is bullshit so uh they came in and fucking cuffed me up real quick and jacked me up and got me out and the funny part is the cop's like, you did the right thing after he got me through the door. He's like, you did the right thing, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How much money? Oh, it's called, excuse me, it's called a discovery. Yes. Discovery. And uh, I never got my discovery. And you're always yeah. supposed to get your discovery. And for some reason, I didn't get mine. And, like, he would just keep coming with a deal and a deal and a deal. And I'm like, well, why don't I just look at the discovery first? Maybe we can get this knocked down from five to three because I've never been in friggin' trouble. Well, i Except little punk ass crimes, but like nothing serious, yeah. you know, like receiving stolen property. I think I had on my record, and and now you, you want to keep taking this five year deal. Well, what about three years? You know what I mean, or something like that. Well, where's my discovery? Oh, yeah, this yeah. Shit, oh, it's coming. No, 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 it's coming. And then I find out it's sitting on his fucking desk. I freaked, man. And he had to hit the mute button. There's a mute button up front, right? Because I'm I'm fucking dropping f bombs and all that shit. Because it's bullshit, Well, you man. could have been held in contempt of court. Yeah, I was freaking out on him. And, yeah. the, and the lady, uh, the, the the prosecutor, which she was a real one, she's, <laughs> what, a, what a piece of work she was. She's like, oh, you don't want the deal? You don't want the deal? Okay, okay. And then like a day later, they came with a 10 on me. Yeah, 10 within 85 means you have to do 85% of your time right after that. And I was like, man, damn, man, did I fuck up? Wow. You know what I mean? When you came up with this plan to rob the bank, how yeah. much money did you think you were going to get? Uh, well, like in I, movies, you you know they're walking out with bags of money. Um, you got I three thousand dollars. Yeah, um, I would have got more to be honest with you. Um, she was reaching underneath. I thought she was hitting the button, but now that I read my discovery, she was actually getting the wad of fucking money that I would have had like ten grand. Okay. Man, I wasn't thinking, Chris. Come on, man. I'm in there fucking faceless, just trying to rob a bank. I'm just. Yeah. 
totally down and out on my luck, man. You know, I didn't really care. I just needed enough money to do what I wanted to do, you know. And uh, so I, mean, I didn't really have a money or I didn't have a fucking something in my head like a, oh, I want fucking eight grand from this thing or 10 grand. I, I feel like you could have gotten like 100 grand. I wish, you know, I would have been on the run a little longer, <laughs> you know, but. You know, everything happens for a reason. Well, and that's the thing. You said that your time in prison has made you the man that you are oh, now. Oh, I absolutely believe that. So would you go back and change anything? Oh, never. Uh, no, absolutely not. Really? I mean, uh, listen, yes, I would go back and change things. Like, I would not rob a bank and actually do the right thing and go with rehab and, 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 and learn the 12 steps and, and figure it out that way. You know, instead of going to the bank and have to sit down in jail and fucking figure shit out. Did you have to get sober in jail, like, real um, quick? Yeah, I, I just, um, oh, absolutely. Um, they don't care, right? Well, I was I was placed, uh, as soon as I got locked up, um, where I was I was charged with strong-arm robbery. So I was placed in with murderers and, and guns. So if you had a gun or you're a murderer and robbery, you were placed in that cell. And, um, yeah, there's some, some tough dudes in there. So I was like, fuck this. And I uh, literally like three days later, I just started working out around this, uh, you know, you're, you're in this little, you know, you, they let you out of the cell and, and you have a day room and I just started working in the day room. But I think what helped me out was, is I, 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 I've been myself. I stayed myself. I wasn't like trying to act like a tough guy and I'm very quiet. You know, I kept my mouth shut. You know what I mean? I know my goal. Get out of here, go there, no trouble at all, and get the fuck home and start yeah. wrestling again. You know yeah. what I mean? So, but that place was crazy. I remember one time I reached under the table and I just felt all these razor blades under the table. And I was like, oh man, I hope this shit don't go down. And one time it went down, uh, It's called, it was called Fight, Fight, uh, what did I call it? Uh, it, was a, it was like Saturday Fights, man. And it was like Bloods and Crips. And if the Bloods ran the uh, bottom tier and the Muslims ran the top tier, and if you wanted to be a Crip and, stand, and stay on that fucking tier, you would have to fight another Blood. So they would go in rooms all day and fight. It was awesome, man. They were just bang, 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 bang. And the cops are so, like, out, out. Like, there's, like, a fence. Yeah. There's a fucking uh, a, a glass shield wall. There's another fence, and then they're in a bubble, okay? So they're all the way out there, man. Yeah, you've got time. Yeah, and then you go in the back, and then and you just make sure that you don't have a group of people looking through that little window, so there's no fucking cops don't see that shit. So you just let them go do their thing, and they would just bang it out. They banged it out all day and night with straight fights. So they're like, Gage, you're up next. So I was like, all right, well, let's fucking rock. They called you by your shoot or your work name? Well, yeah, I went, I went Gage in there, man. So if anybody uh, knows me, I'm Gage in, in prison, man. You know, I, I, I don't know these people, so they're not going to call me by my first name. Only, you know, friends and family or people that love me call me Nick or Nikki. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I went by Gage in there, man. So you're like, you're up next. And I, I literally got up and said, let's rock. But they were just fucking with me, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause I'm I'm neutral, man. I ain't no part of no gang or nothing, man. You know, I just roll solo. I just want to watch a little ESPN. I'm gonna work out, wash my clothes. You just want to do your time. Yes. What was your first night in prison like? Um, well, it sucked because they would keep you uh, in a. It's called a tank. So you would go in. You would go down. You're downstairs, and you just go into this fucking cell that's holding. I'm trying to think. What 20 people was in there with me. And they're all there on their first night Yeah, too? they're waiting to go up to the tiers, you know? Okay. They're waiting to go up to their block, you know? But they don't, these guys are slowing their paperwork. They don't give a fuck. So it takes them like 24 hours to freaking get you up to, to a block. Oh my God. You know what I mean? So, uh, so you got a bunch of pissed off dudes yeah. all in this one room. Um, yeah. And um, I was, you know, I, I just laid there and, and kind of fell asleep and chilled, man. People left me alone. I always had my weight up. Even when I was doing drugs, man, I still had my weight up, man. So, like, and I went up and and 24 hours later, like, Wilson, and I'm like, yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> grab your mat, grab your shit, and let's go. And they put me in 3 North Sea, man, which is a uh, murder's block, man. So I went there. 
And, uh, you know, I just, you know, been myself, man. I stayed quiet, and they're like, who the fuck's this dude? Then all of a sudden, you know, my shit comes on the news. And they're like, oh, shit, he's a wrestler, man. And so they all like that shit, you know. <laughs> but were there, and, were there certain people, though, in prison that were like, this guy thinks he's tough? I'm going to show him what tough is. Yeah, but um, no, I never ran, ran in that problem. You know why? Because I was in that fucking yard lifting them weights and going hard. And um, I stuck to my crew, and I never act tough, you know. I knew, but I never backed down, you know what I mean? If you're going to fucking say you want to fight, I am going to, like that, fight you. I have no problem doing it, man. I've been doing it my whole life, man. Yeah. So, but I never really ran into a problem. I had this one problem, man. I used to work on a cow farm. Uh, that was my job, man, milking <laughs> cows and shit. Yeah, what? man. What? Yeah. So... I'll give you a little thing on, um, so uh, they put me on the cow farm as a job. Actually, I asked for the job because I have friends there. So I, I went to uh, medium status. I went from maximum, which is, uh, uh, um, you know, hardcore criminals. Yeah. And then if you're good and you, you earn points, you go to medium. I went to medium for two years. Then I earned my points and I went to minimum. Minimum's great. You, know, you get to move around. You're not in a cell no more. You know, it's dorms, and you get a job, or like a real job. So I have friends down there, and they're like, come on down to the farm. So I was like, hell yeah. And so I got second shift farm. And uh, they had the silo where you throw cow feed out of the silo. And I said, yes, I want that. Because <sighs> it'll work on my cardio, and it'll work on my abs, and it'll work on my back. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking, yeah, like, yeah. man, let me train to get right. So when I get out, man, I'm looking different. I wanted to look different when I got out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you could blow. Listen, I blew up fast when I was in prison. They gave me a job in the freaking kitchen. Every seven days a week, you had to wake up four in the morning. And you can eat whatever you want. And it was just butter on everything because butter <laughs> tastes good. You know, it's that <laughs> shitty food. But if you throw a little pound of butter on there, all yeah. of a sudden, them pancakes are tasting like buttermilk from <laughs> IHOP. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I was buttering on everything, man. I blew up to 250 with a gut, man. I was like very like, I was like, dude, I got to get out of this kitchen. So I, so um, this one guy came up to me and he knew I was, you know, I was a quiet guy and he knew I was a nice dude and everything. And he's like, um, you know, the sister Karina is looking for a person. And I became, <laughs> if you want to believe it, I became the assistant chaplain. You know, for Sister Karina. So wow, yeah. are you a religious person? Um, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, I believe in God and everything like that. You know, mom, mom raised me like that. But do I make church every day? No, you know, yeah. I, you know, I believe do you pray in every day. Um, yes, I do. I really? say a prayer every meal, every dinner. Um, me and my wife say a prayer. You know, um, but do I, you know, make? I should make church a little more than I do, but. I'm not a huge religious guy, but I believe in it. You know, I feel what like I mean? your church is in the ring. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. Yeah, I love that place, man. And uh, this, that injury really, really sucked, man. Sitting home doing nothing, I hated it. It bothered me so much, man. But yeah, if you're not earning money from wrestling, you're not really earning money, right? No, no. You know, that's my job, man. I yeah. have no other job, so. I can't help but notice yeah, you have an energy drink, but you also have a knife sitting next yeah. to it. Oh, yeah, man. I, I stay with a weapon, man. You know, you never know if someone's going to fuck with me. Did you not. fly with that? Nah, man. TSA. Oh, actually, I got you an checked your bag. Actually, I got in an argument with the, uh, the lady there because uh, I didn't know that you couldn't wear them gator uh, mask oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking. That's a recent thing, though, so that's not your fault. I'm just like, well, what's the difference? That's a CDC that, thing, very it, recently. Yeah, so they made you. They made you wear a well, mask. Well, yeah, I have my um, I have my Sixers uh, guess, other mask in there. Yeah. You know, shout out to the Sixers, my favorite <laughs> basketball team, and we're on fire right now. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, we're gonna we're taking over the playoffs. But um, so I had another mask. And, yeah. And, but she was just very ignorant. And if you ever go through an airport, I fly a lot, man. They're just so ignorant sometimes, man. Yeah. You don't have to talk to people like that. But the other part is I try to look at two sides of the thing, man. Look how many people they have to deal with. That's it. And I fly many, a ton, too. I'm with and, you. And, and look how many people probably are so ignorant to them. You know what I mean? Well, unfortunately, so. for every person like me or you that flies a ton, yeah, the guy behind you or the guy in front of you might be flying for the first time. Yeah. And they have no clue how this works. Yeah. But um, the other part is you're know, like, well, go you know, find another job if you don't like to do this job. You know, but... <laughs> 
it is what it is, you know. I, um, I just didn't. And then she was like, uh, uh, "There's a camera watching us," and I'm like, "Why did you say that? Do you think like I was gonna like attack you or something? Like I was like thrown off, and then I just but put you my mask." You definitely have this air about you, yeah. Where if you didn't know who you were and what you did for a living, yeah, I might you might go, you. "It's a bad dude." Yeah. And if anybody knows me and knows uh, all my friends and everything like that, man, they know I'm a good dude, man. I'm a mellow dude, man. Yeah. Um, you but know, it's just, I don't know, it's the way you carry yourself. Yeah, you have man. this energy about yourself. Like, yeah. maybe you're living the uh, gimmick a little bit. Uh, well, everybody knows that. Uh, um, everybody that's been in this business and made it knows uh, they're part of their gimmick. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, mine's just turned up a notch, you know. Where does the real version of you end and the gimmick version of you begin? Or are they both melded together now? Uh, show day, man. I okay. start turning it up a notch. Definitely when I wake up, I'm like, damn, it's show day, man. We're about to fucking wrestle. Okay, you know? so what? Ha you wake up on show day, what happens from there? I just I just start zoning in, man. Okay. You know what I mean? I start thinking about the match. I start thinking about other things. Especially, like, if it's a tournament and you know you got to go in three rounds or whatever, man. And, like... This day and age, man, all these deathmatch guys are fucking tough, man. It's like, it used to be like these tournaments, like you would have like, all right, well, if this guy's tough first round, I'm going to roll through <clears> him. <throat> uh, uh, he might be tough, but the second round guy's kind of a little iffy, you know what I mean? So I might be able to take that round off. I'll beat him, but I might be able to take that round off. You ain't got that no more, man. You got animals every single round, especially GCW. Yeah. We bring nothing in but animals. You know, look at Alex Cologne. Shout out to Alex Cologne, man. He's one of my favorite deathmatch guys going today, man. That I have seen that guy get so cut up and beat up and just in the locker room cleaning himself up and not even crying about it, not complaining or nothing, man. And it's just, uh, you know... I feel like I'm going to be wrestling him soon. I better get fucking ready, you know? You're probably at the point of your career now where you've got some of these up-and-coming guys that are going, you uh, inspired me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even, like, the non-deathmatch guys want to wrestle me. And, shit <laughs> and like have a deathmatch? Um, some do, yeah. 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 And I take pride in that. That means that um, the word's going around that Nick Gage is good at what he does, you know, for guys who want to do that. I mean... Well, you're kind of like a... If you're going to have a death match, you want to have a death match against Nick Cage. Yeah. You don't want to just have a death match. Yes. You want to have it against the king of the death match. You're damn right. Yeah. yeah. I'm the god of the shit, man. And uh, I really believe that, man. I really believe that. I really think I'm the best one going right now. But, you know, people are on my tail, man. And you just got to remember, man, I'm 40 years old. I've been doing this since 18. I must have went through three generations already. Yeah, you know what I mean, and I'm still going strong. It's not a lot of longevity in what you do. No, there isn't, and I'm still going strong, and 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 the hunger's still there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I also want to show these young motherfuckers that I can hang with you guys. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, before the pandemic hit, I remember telling myself I am not going to turn down one booking unless it's like a guy that don't know how to wrestle and shit like that, because I would not get in a ring with inexperienced people. You know, you need to be trained. You need yeah. to know this business. You need to learn how to fucking work this business. But I told myself I would never turn down any fucking thing. I mean, and uh, all them guys on the WWE TV right now, I must have wrestled them all back in the day. Keith Lee wrestled all them guys, man. So, all in death matches? Nah, Keith Lee wasn't a death yeah. match, but I would have loved wrestling him in a death match, man. <laughs> maybe maybe he would, he one day. Been, he would have been great, right? But, like... Think about it. You can go train somewhere to be a wrestler. You yeah. can't really train somewhere to be a deathmatch wrestler. Yeah. You kind of have to like learn trial by fire. Absolutely. Literally Ab <laughs> trial yeah. by fire. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I always <clears throat> tell the people, um, me and Homicide, we opened up the compound for a little bit. And um, we were training wrestlers. And, and a couple of them were like, well, I want to be a deathmatch wrestler. And I would just tell them, listen, you need to learn how to wrestle first. Mm. And then get in there and you know, and then figure it out. But you got to learn how to wrestle, man. You know. So beyond what happens inside the ring or in a mm -hmm. wrestling match, what scares you? What scares me? Heights. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I hate heights. Uh, I um, I love life right now, and um, so death, death kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah. You know, I'm getting a little older in age. You know, 
and I'm just scared, you know, you never know in life, you know what I mean? But um, I do, you know, go to the doctor and get yearly checkups, so um, I need to get the new one. But my last checkup was great, so. Does your doctor there. think you're insane? Yeah, um, especially when I come in all cut up. I try to wear the hat, you know what I mean? But when the hat comes off yeah. and the scars are all over like that. A lot of scars. Yeah. I think I'm okay, though, man, with my forehead and stuff like that. You're not like Steve um, Carino's forehead. Listen, there's there's no um, all my shit's hard way. Yeah. I, um, I don't do any of the poking, whatever they call that shit, man. I don't even like talking like that. Um, everything I do is hard way. I'll be honest with you. I was trimming my nose hairs, and I cut my nose right here. <laughs> That shit hurt, man, really bad. <laughs> so it's like I get this glass and I get light too smashed over me and I'm okay with that. But I use a nose trimmer and then I cut myself right here and it's fucking killing me, man. So <laughs> it's crazy, man. Little little cuts, you know, like them little cuts in your hands and shit, man. Uh, we just got a cat. Me and my wife, was cr there was a kitten crying outside of our house on our fence. So we went and grabbed them and we brought them to my house and now we have a kitten. Man, but uh, every time I pick him up, man, he just scratches the crap out of me. So them little cuts, man, kill me, man. I hate that. But then I got a six-inch gash. Like I got glass right here in my body from like 2000, 2001. No. Yeah, I got one right here. I got another one down here when I faced Nate Hatcher in a 200 light tube death match. So it's like you always gonna like kind of touch it and be like yeah you know shout out to nate man you know big nate because he passed away too so you want to keep that in you um yeah i do man you know it's just memories um be honest with you when when i had my arm injury and, and i told the doctor can you just start cutting the, all this glass out of me he's like it, it's fine i healed over it and you're all right that's what the doctor told me so you oh, have no. it that's in your arm or your side oh too? yeah it's right here yeah you can sit i just play with it all the time Oh my gosh! Wait, see it poking out? Yeah, I see it poking out. Yeah. Stop that! Yeah. Like when um um like uh, for me getting this injury, I kind of got out of shape a little. But um, once I start getting in shape and the triceps start popping a little bit, you'll start seeing it poking out. Especially when I'm doing like you know tricep extensions and stuff like that. You'll yeah. see it poking out and shit like that. At the end of the Dark Side of the Ring episode, you basically say, "You know, you're not going to be here for a long mm -hmm. time." Yeah. It kind of made me sad because you are a great guy and all of your fans want you to be around forever. Yeah. Um, the reason why I say that is because um, my parents both died at, at the same age, which was 48. So I kind of like, I hope I don't go down to 48. You know what I mean? So. Well, that was like your mom died of breast cancer. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. I loved her, man. She was sure. awesome. Uh, my dad, uh, I believe, died of lung cancer i want to say uh, my mom fought it so she's a tough lady man i think that's where i get it from yeah so she fought it for like three or four years my dad just just didn't fight it at all he just you know pulled the hospital bed up to his house had the nurse come in and he just you know withered away and i was too young to um to realize my dad and shit like that i'll tell you this crazy ass story listen to this one chris okay so I never really got close to my dad. I would see him every other weekend. He would pick us up. I would go upstairs, play Nintendo, whatever. I will go shoot basketball out front. You know what I mean? We really never sat down and kicked it, right? So as I'm locked up, um, like I was in prison, and they came and locked me up in prison. They thought I was doing something illegal, so they threw me in fucking another fucking jail. It's like reception. Okay. Okay. Is this solitary confinement? I'm not in solitary, okay. but I'm almost there. Okay. Okay. It's it's reception. So you go to reception, and from reception they st you go see uh, classification, and okay. they send you what prison you want to go to. So I'm in in that classification, and I'm just waiting for someone to come talk to me. I don't know why I'm locked up. I have no clue. They didn't tell me nothing. They just came, cuffed me, put me in a van, shot me there. Oh. So I've been there so goddamn long that I became a runner, which means you get let out of your cell and you hand out the trays, you mop, do all that okay. shit, which is good because you're you're in your cell 23 and one. So I go down and uh, these guys are like, yo, and and I, would, I was mentally tough. I was like, these motherfuckers are not gonna break me, man. They're not gonna send me here. They think they're gonna break me because all you're getting is three meals. You don't get no canteen, no nothing. You get three meals and that's it. 
and I feel like they sent me there to break me and mm. shit. So I did the total opposite. I'm out in the freaking yard banging push ups. I'm banging pull ups. I'm running. They had like weights out there. I'm hitting them. I'm doing this. I'm a big circuit trainer. I'm a big hit guy. You know, high yeah. intensity interval training. Yeah. Huge on that. You know, I like to get the heart rate up, shoot it down, shoot it back up. So I'm doing that. So I go past this one cell, hand their tray, and they're like, yo, you mind if we work out with you the next day, right? These two guys. I said, yeah, no problem, man. Come on, work out. Yeah. So they worked out. Well, halfway through, the one guy quit. And I'm like, all right, man, get the fuck out of here, man. Go, all right, cool. And then we just keep working out. And he tried to blame it off, and they didn't have enough food. Well, guess what, bud? I don't have enough food yeah, either. You know, I'm eating the same shit you yeah. are. I might get a little extra because I'm a runner, but it's bread I'm getting extra, or maybe an extra apple, okay? <laughs> it's not like I'm getting a steak or something, or, yeah. or, or they're bringing me food. And listen to this. So I'm, I'm mopping, and he goes, hey, Nick. And I'm like, yo, I said... I never get called Nick in prison. It's Gage. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, why are you calling me by my first name? Who the fuck are you? Yeah. And it turned out it was my first cousin, Dennis. Yup, Denny. I haven't seen, it's my dad's brother's kid, and I haven't seen Denny forever. But I knew Denny was locked up for a, a vehicle manslaughter. So I was like, holy shit. So I'm like, yo, Denny, what's up, man? So Denny's the one that quit on me during the training if i fucking knew my cousin quit on me yeah. he would i would he would have never quit so you're would, training with him and you don't know it's your cousin no i had no clue i just haven't seen him forever yeah, for sure. so it's like so i was like oh yo yo denny what's up so my um my celly left the next day because it's classification so you just go to your next prison and i i got him to move him i got the cop i was cool with the cop so he, i got him to move him to my cell and denny was there for five days before he left and he got to tell me stories about my dad. Him and my wow. dad were good friends. Yeah. So I got to hear all these cool ass stories yeah. how cool my dad was that like I didn't get to hear, you know, or yeah. I didn't get to ask them because I was just too young to like, you know, I was like 14. I didn't really care, you know. So that was dope as yeah, hell, it's just right? Like you got to so, meet your dad. So kinda. I got, yeah, in such a shitty ass hole. Wow. Shitty ass place like that, something positive comes out of that. That's why I always tell people, man, you can always turn a negative into a positive, man. And that's what I did in prison, man. I might be in prison, but I'm going to turn and I'm going to get sucked. Every positive thing I can get out of this motherfucking place. At what point in you being locked up did you start to think about returning to wrestling? Oh, right away, man. Oh, okay. Right away. Um, uh, and that's why I you're mean, training so hard. Not right away, but... Um, you know, like a couple of months down the line, I was like, all right, yeah, you know, I want to fucking do this. So I started training. And then once I, um, that's why I scream uh, free, free two six. That's my boy, man. And uh, he taught me how to lift the right way. He taught me how to work out. He taught me how to eat, diet, and do all that shit. So that's why I scream free two six all the time, man, because he's locked up right now. Mm. Um, you know, he wanted to do a hustle and do his thing to feed his family, and they locked him up for eight years. So I said, dude, I'm going to keep your name alive until you get back out. You know what I mean? Then he's going to be in the stands at your matches. Yes. Uh, yeah, I love him. I mean, seriously. Uh, um, he's a natural athlete. He was the dude um, where he was on the high school football team running for 300 yards a game. Man. You know what I mean? Full, yeah. full ride to Temple. Would, uh, and he was a smart dude. I think it was um, marine biology. Am I saying that correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got a full ride for marine biology at Temple University. A smart dude. Well, he was going to go to Iowa, but Iowa fired their football coach. So he went to Temple, which was a bad idea because he likes to smoke crack. And if you've ever been to North Philly, crack's right around the fucking corner. So mm. he told me this one story. I'll shout out to 326 for this one. He told me this one story that he smoked crack in the bathroom right before the uh, ESPN game against the Miami Hurricanes. And this is 2002. If you know anything about sports in the Miami Hurricanes, that team was loaded. And he came out last, and he was all uh, on crack and shit, so the cameras are in his face, yeah. and he bugged out. He said, that was, I'll never do that again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so you could tell, you, so you know 2-6 is a little shot out. You know what I mean? <laughs> but aren't we all in a little, you know, uh, that was crazy-ass story. But he taught me how to clean, man. He taught me how to do all these different lifts. I was one of them dudes where I would work out and turn it up to 100. But I didn't realize how to work my body out the right way. Why mm. am I lifting? And why am I doing this reps or doing this? Or why am I attacking the muscle this way? Yeah. 
And uh, we got close, man. He, he came into the thing, and he's like, who works out the hardest here? And like Gage, man. And, and he went and worked out. And turned around, this dude was a beast, man. <laughs> this guy was a beast. You know, he was cleaning 315. My God. He was benching wow. 405. He was squatting. His numbers were just, he was like, he, at one time, he's like, I'm going to outlift you by 100 on all power lifts. But the only thing I could keep up with him was squats. You know, my squat was, uh, my PR was 545, I think. Dude. I hit, I hit a PR 545. Uh, you know what? Let's keep it at 505. I might not have been parallel, but 505 was definitely that's Im- parallel. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, we were working out every day, man. It, there's nothing to do. Yeah, what so. else is there to do, right? Yeah, well, there is. We had a job. This is how my thing, I wake up, go to breakfast, get ready for yard at 7 in the morning, go work out for an hour and 15, hit them weights hard, hard. I always tell people, man, when you go and work out, you know, first, you know, get introduced to the weights. Slowly get in there. Once you're ready, you go attack them weights, okay? You fucking attack them with a, you know, you just got to attack them motherfuckers, you know? And, I, and then once I started attacking the weights, man, and then after that, we would come back, and then we would have to go to the cow farm, and that's when I would throw 2,000 pounds of cow feed, you know? I would always, it's I always call it stick and twist so i will work my oblique muscles yeah yeah and shit and then uh he was afraid two six was afraid to come up there at first he's like man and then finally he came up man and it would just rip our abs up and that's why i would do it you know so did you reach out to gcw as you were about to get released i well gcw started off was when i um when i first got released um when i was when i was locked up I had all these fans sending me cards and letters, keep your head up, and I'm like, wow, I'm this popular? Like, these people are taking time out to send me these letters yeah. and doing all that. And um, so I was like, how can I give back to these crazy motherfuckers? <laughs> oh, that's right, let's put on a deathmatch tournament. So we did the NGI one, which I missed because I got locked up again. Yeah, but you violated it, your parole, right? Yeah, I violated that bullshit. But, um, what was the violation? Yeah, it's just fucking bullshit, Okay. Man. <laughs> And, we uh, don't have to get into it. Yeah. And uh, so um, it was a success, you know. And while I was locked up, uh, Lauderdale fucking took it to the next level and started fucking running shows. And then by the time I got out, you know, I was ready to rock and roll. And the fans just loved me when I got out, man. Yeah. Which was dope, man. It just gave me that energy I need, man. And you looked like a different dude because you have been working up, out so man. hard. I yeah. was ripped up, man. We were working out hard. I remember we worked out 26 days straight in a row. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's and, a lot. And this is, and this is, and, and uh, you know, this is without no protein, you know. There's, you know, there's not too much food this in there. This is a prison diet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a guy in the vegetable, uh, the garden. Okay. So uh, he was my guy. So I would get him to get me vegetables and sneak them to me, and we would have like uh, veggie wraps and shit like that and stuff oh. like that. So is prison? We try to you know eat the right way. Is prison in real life like it's portrayed in the movies? Um, it depends where you're at. Okay. So if you're at maximum security, yes, you gotta watch your back. You know, you gotta all that stuff, man. You know, guys want to, um, you know, guys want to take your canteen, man. Some of them dudes don't got family. They don't have money sent in. So they're hungry, man. You know, and, you know, with that gang shit, too, man, I seen this one time, man, with these guys are repping this blood gang and all that shit. Then I literally watched his boys sit there and eat while he had no money or nothing and just starve, and they didn't give him nothing. So I went over and I gave him a bunch of shit, man. You know? Wow. Yeah. And that's supposed to be his gang. He's supposed to throw down at any time, any place, anywhere. Yeah. And ruin his life and get more time because of that. But you won't give him a fungo. You know, you know what a fungo? You don't know what a fungo no, is, huh, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> a fungo is like, I don't know, it's just all this bunch of bullshit until uh, they take crackers and they turn the crackers into dough. And then they put like uh, you know summer sausage in there and all this bullshit in there. It's great. It tastes awesome, man. <laughs> but you can spread it out throughout a lot of people. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And they let this guy hungry. Huh. So I went over there, but like a couple months. What was it? Oh, I went to another prison after that, and then I asked the guy like, "Yo, why?" And he's like, "Well, you don't know what that man did to not get fed." 
Mm. So I started figuring out, well, he must have done some fucked up shit for them to eat that shit right in his face, and he's hungry, yeah. and he's complaining. And this is a big-ass dude. Like, if he really wanted to, he can go over and slap that dude in the face and just take his fungo. But, you know, they're seeing already in the gang and shit like that. But between this story of you helping that dude out, mm. you adopting this kitten in your yard. Yeah. People are beginning to He's think. He's being a pain in the ass right now, though, man. I'm <laughs> people are beginning real. to think that Nick Gage is actually a sweetheart deep down inside. Yeah, I'm a good person. You know what? I'm a strong believer in, man. Be yourself. Always be yourself, man. I don't care, man, if people want to fucking say names about you or whatever, man. Well, fuck them people, man. Be yourself and always be yourself, man. And life's going to be awesome for you. So I got no problem saying all this stuff, man. I'm comfortable with myself. Yeah. I love myself. You know, I wish I was uh, in better shape. But other than that, you know, and, and, and I try to preach that on the road, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and um, you know, especially like, you know, like uh, um, with the trans and stuff like that. And, and the gays, I sent the tw tweets out for that stuff, man. And, and they get it the hardest. And it's start, we're starting to get understand that, like, this is great that people are like, you know what? They're accepting who they are, man. Yeah. And it's awesome that a guy can come out and say, you know what? This is me, and this is the way I am. Yeah. And this is the way I want to live my life. And I think it's dope, man. And, you know, I feel the same way with, with everybody. Yeah. If everybody would just be themselves, man, I'm telling you, you, you would feel a lot better about yourself. Th this is who you are. Yeah. And, like, you're unapologetic about it. No, no problem. Yeah. But you have a lot of detractors. You have a lot of critics who say that's not really wrestling. Yeah, you're right. What do you say with, um, to those people? I understand what they're saying. You know, I get it. But um, I just think it's another art form of wrestling, you know? You know, I'm pretty sure back in the day when um, – Dusty was bleeding all over the place. I'm pretty sure there were some people saying, well, this ain't wrestling. Hmm. This guy's yeah. bleeding all over the place, you know? Um, you know, I just think it's, it's another art form of wrestling. I'm pretty sure that they were saying when, when, when uh, guys started high flying and started taking it in the air instead of Matt wrestling all the time, I'm pretty sure people were saying shit about that. Listen, man, I don't listen to them people, man. You know, I have a mindset. I know what I love, and I know what I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'm easy going. You know why? Because when I went to prison, man, I learned patience, and I learned how to practice that shit. And I know how to take one thing and let it out of this, go in this ear and out of that fucking ear. Okay? That is a skill. And another thing is, is I just, I, I'm not really big on that internet, man, because there's a lot of people and a lot of haters on there yeah. that are keyboard <laughs> tough guys that can type real quick and say all this shit about you, but when they see you, they don't say the shit about you. You know what I mean? So, you know. What kind of backlash so, did you receive after the David Arquette match? Um, well, I never go on the internet, so I don't even know, man. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, that became a mainstream yeah. thing. Yeah, it was on TMZ. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. My wife's like, you're on, you're on TMZ? I was like, no, I'm not. And then when I was on TMZ... Um, you know, I took it, you know, it, it, you know, he, he needed to stick to the script, you know what I mean? And he went off the script and shit like that, you know, it wasn't my fault. Listen, I'm very good at what I do in deathmatch wrestling, and I know how to do things to take care of you. It might look like you're fucking getting hurt and you're getting crushed, but really, like, I know how to do things that won't hurt you as bad as if I do it the right, the real way, you know? Do you think he just got scared? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're pizza um, cutting his forehead and then you're pizza cutting yeah. his mouth. Yeah, but just relax. You know, you're not the first guy. I'd said, you know, that's, I mean, think about that. It's yeah. tough to relax when someone has a pizza cutter in your forehead. Yeah, but he already knows, man. You know, we had this discussion already. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's, it's entertainment, man. I'm not going to cut your freaking thing open. But if you're going to move your mouth open like this, when I tell you to stand still, relax. You know, I'm entertaining My the crowd. My heart's racing. You're thinking about you this. Know? You know, another thing is, is uh, you know, he tried to spin and hit a double shoot on me when I'm crushing the glass on his head. Dude, I'm like, relax. Calm down. I'm, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to carve your fucking head with the glass. You know, that's yeah. all I'm going to do. So how did he get the light tube in his neck? Uh, he spun and tried to shoot a double on me, <clears throat> and I had the glass in my hand where I was going to, you know, I know what I'm doing, man. You know what I mean? And when he, 
when I was here, he spun and, and it went in his neck. And at first I was like, damn, did I just kill David Arquette? That was my first thought in my head, right? So fucking, it, it, rewind this. This is another funny story. For me to go out and get the glass, I had to go to the back and get the light tubes. And when I went in the back to get the light tubes, I seen Chris Hero. Shout out to Chris Hero. <laughs> I haven't seen him forever. So I was like, oh, yo, Chris Hero, what's up, my boy? In the middle of the match. <laughs> and then I went back out and fucking grabbed the light tubes and fucking crushed them and shit. I thought that's a little funny part. You-, <laughs> you know? Um do you think he knew what he was getting himself into? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think he was doing it for, for the documentary. I didn't even know he was shooting a documentary. I went out and had steak dinner with him and explained to him that this shit's real. Um, I yeah, think he, he took got... you to like the fanciest restaurant in Hollywood, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really nice. Like, you were probably there. surrounded by like all kinds of like A-listers. Yeah, it was it was really nice of him, man. Yeah. You know, the food was very good. Um, he was cool dude. That's the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. That's like... They shot a bunch of scenes from uh, Quentin Tarantino's new film there. Yeah. That is a very, like... I did not know that. Yeah, now yeah. you know. Oh, that's pretty that's, cool. Like, he took you to the spot. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and um, he wanted to do fire, and I, I exited that because... He wanted to do fire? Yeah. Well, I've been lit on fire before, man. Yeah, of course. So it's dangerous. You can't control it sometimes, man. So I just exited that. Okay. But, I try to explain to him, man, all this shit's real, man. This glass is real. This shit's real. I think he fucking, when I started turning it up a notch, I think he started like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. You know, is this, well, guy, I think- take, is this guy taking liberties on me or whatever? But no, I'm just going in, man. You know, what am I supposed to do? Take it easy on the actor, and then I got to wrestle freaking G. Rabe or Alex Cologne or Schlack or, or, or any of the awesome, crazy deathmatch guys yeah. and, and then go in on them. You know what I mean? So like you I, treated him like you treated everybody absolutely. else. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And I, of course I did. Have you talked to him since? Um, no. He called my house a couple times for, he wanted to use the footage for documentary. And I asked for some money and he told me he don't give money out for documentary. So I said, all right, bye. And then he kept calling and then his wife called and then um, I said, well, you know, what are you going to pay me? You know, like, why are you going to use my footage? And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to make money off this yeah, documentary. His wife was producing the film. Too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to make money off this documentary. So what they did is instead of that, they gave me a gift and they sent me a king size mattress. So <laughs> that's what I got out of. Uh, OK, his, were yeah. you OK with that? Well, I, it's a little weird, you know, but. <laughs> You know, I still I still have not opened it to this day. It's what? in my house, yeah. You I'm, should probably open it. Well, I like my bed right now. So I want to keep it in the in the thing so when my uh, bed goes, I have a new king size mattress bed from David it's, Arquette. I mean, if this bed's good enough for David Arquette and yeah. his wife Christina, it's probably yeah. good enough for the King of the Death match. Yes, yeah. And uh you know, and it's a king size, man. So well, it's huge. King for the king. There yeah, you go. You damn fucking right. <laughs> it you makes know? sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, you know, when I speak them words, I really truly believe that I am the king of the death match, man. I feel like I'm the god of this shit, man. Who was it before you? Oh, man. Is it funk? Yeah, I had to be fucking Cactus Jack, man. Okay. You know, um, yeah, God, I love Terry Funk, man. You know, it had to be Terry Funk. There's probably some Japanese guys that I'm forgetting their names because yeah. I suck with names that, that really fucking went hard shit like that but it, 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 um, Cactus Jack was my my favorite all time I can give you a little Cactus Jack story please um, <laughs> so I got out of jail and I went to this one show that he was on and I wasn't wrestling but I wanted to go see the boys and um, so I see him and I run right up to him and I say um, you know I'm, I'm Nick Gage you know good to meet you and I just wanted to let you know I just wanted to say thank you yeah. for getting me involved in deathmatch wrestling and he, and he apologized to me. And I said, don't you ever apologize to me. I love this deathmatch wrestling, and I'm the best motherfucker at it. So thank you. And I just left after that. <laughs> he looked at me like I was crazy. Mick Foley um, hasn't had a deathmatch in like 20 years. Yeah. He was, um, he was in my corner one time for, uh, I forget what company it was. It might have been JCW or something like that before... Uh, GCW came along or something like that. He was in my corner and it was so awesome. You know what I mean? I yeah. did I did Tournament of Death, CCW's Tournament of Death. Yeah. And after I was done that, I hopped in a car and went and did another show. 
and he was on that show and he was in my corner and it was so cool and I took a picture with him giving him the middle finger and <laughs> shit. so it was dope man do you so, think you can wrestle this style in your 50s um I don't see why not man you know I'm I just I'm a day by day by guy you okay. know what I mean we'll see what happens you know I got AJ Gray on Saturday that dude's tough as hell you know, and we'll see. And we'll survive that one, move on to the next one. But I will wrestle until I can't go no more. Or my wow. body won't let me go no more. It's just in my blood, Chris, man. I love yeah. this shit, man. And I hope that when I can't go no more, there's some way I could find a job in wrestling that I can do um, that allows me to stay in this business my whole life. Yeah. You know, I just hope so. You know, um, I pray for it, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. You know, we'll see. What did you think of the exploding barbed wire match that AEW did? Um, I mean, it, it was on, obviously, on national television, so it couldn't be a crazy death match. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I seen clips of it. I, um, I probably watched most of it. Um, I thought it was okay, you know. Good for, you know, cable television. Yeah, it was okay. Okay. You know, um, I, don't, I don't know what happened at the end, if it was supposed to be like that. You know, they're very good at fucking messing with your mind a little bit and and maybe they did they made it did that on purpose i don't think you so. know or you think they just fucked up i just think look i don't know right yeah, but i, I don't, don't think that either. that's how they would have wanted that match to end no. especially the ending because right, with eddie kingston huge. in there yeah it's huge if anybody's <clears> seen <throat> the old one with um hayabusa and otani i mean otani um i forget the other guy's name i should Look at me and names, man. I suck <laughs> at it. You told me earlier, you're like, I'm not great with names. Hayabusa and uh, the other guy, which I should know. Yeah, everyone in the comments. I met him too, here. man. He's, um, it blew up. You know what I mean? That was such a cool yeah. fucking visual of all that smoke and blowing up yeah. and all that. And then you have poppers go off. <laughs> so, And I was yeah. really surprised because, um, you know, them guys... You know, and guys love pro wrestling too, and they take their jobs very seriously. And yeah. I'm surprised someone like Kenny Omega would, you know, but what are you gonna do? And they got money too to make that shit fucking happen. Yeah, that's why I think that an explosion didn't go off. Like obviously, well, clearly something happened. They where would, I would, I would think that they would have rehearsed it. Yeah, and you got that long ass countdown. Yeah, you know, which you know. Uh, another thing is, is um, you know, there's nobody, no crowd, man. I would yeah. love to see him do it outside. You know what I mean? It would have been dope, man. Well, it, that it is kind of outside where they did it. Is it really? Yeah, Daly's know. place is like an open area amphitheater. Yeah, I've never been there. So, yeah. it's, so, so when the ring's set up, it's outside. It's open air. Okay. So you ever been to like a concert where there's no doors or anything? You walk right in. There's a grandstand, but there's a a roof over it, but gotcha. it's open air. Which is how they've been able to run this during COVID. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe if we had the fans there too, it would have been dope. Oh, that would change everything. Yeah. But um, what are you going to do, man? (laughs) You know, you can't change things. You just got to move on, you know, and stay positive. Is there anybody you haven't wrestled yet? Uh, Yeah, there's a couple guys. Other than like Cactus Jack? Yeah, man. (laughs) I wish I would love to wrestle that guy, man. Terry Funk, man. (laughs) Um, yeah, there's, you know, there's a couple guys I haven't wrestled yet, but, um. Did they know you have, uh, want to wrestle them? Um. Do you want to put it out there? Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I wrestled Kenny Omega. I would love to wrestle that guy, man. It's a legit Big, death match, um, yeah. When I seen him, um, uh, wrestle that guy, the Japanese guy from New Japan, uh, who's the, what's his In name? In New Japan? Yeah, he wrestled. Tanahashi? No, nah, the guy, he went, uh, he did Oh, the, on he, Wednesday. No, no, this no? is old school. Before oh. he went to AEW, he wrestled. He did the um, he wrestled him for an hour long. They're world champ, <clears throat> New Japan guy, world champ. The world champ right now is Will Ospreay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Will's my guy How too, about man. That, right? Shout out to Will, man. That's my boy. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I stopped following New Japan for a little bit. Yeah, he won like a month ago. But anyway, he wrestled um somebody uh and their matches. Abushi? Huh? Abushi? Nah, I don't know, man. Chris. <laughs> Anyway, they're, they're, it was a masterpiece, and their workability is just out of control, man. So, you know, I'll wrestle any I, – I always put myself out there. I'll wrestle anybody, anywhere, anytime, man. Yeah. And I'll stick to that until I can't do it no more, you know. And does it matter to you if you go over or not? Um, certain times, but not yeah. really. 
I'm not a big fan where I need to go over or not. I just want to have an awesome match, and yeah. I want the fans to be entertained. Yeah. You know? You know, sometimes you got to go over and, you know, and keep your name up there, you know, but it doesn't bother me. I got yeah. no problem looking at the lights, yeah. you know? So. How do you want to be remembered when this is all done? Ah, oh, wow. Great question. I'm just a guy who fucking gave it his all, man. Never backed down and, and gave it 100% and, and really loved this sport and and really helped put deathmatch wrestling on the map. You know, I want to be a guy who, who really fucking... I remember when they tried to fucking get rid of deathmatch wrestling, CZW, which is a company I built and now it fucking sucks. And uh, it bothers me to say that, but it does, man. They try to get rid of deathmatch wrestling and I remember sitting there in my room, I was at um, a halfway house by then, saying, I'm going to put this shit back on the fucking map. And that's what we did, GCW and us. We put it back on the map. Yeah. And we found all them talents that people said can't go or can't do that. You know, we found Eric Ryan, who who, EC, uh, who CZW cut and got rid of. You know, we fucking had Nate Hatred come back, you know. You know what they did with Nate Hatred and Dewey Donovan, man? As soon as I got locked up, they cut them right away, man. Mm. So I said, as soon as I get out, man, I'm going to get them back. As soon as I got out, I called Nate and I said, let's fucking get back on the fucking thing, man. And we're going to be hate club again. And we start doing the hate club thing. And Dewey, any, I told Dewey, anytime Dewey can show up, anytime, any show, you're going to walk out with me, man, because you're fucking my guy. And I brought him back too, man. You know, I just didn't like how he fucking did people dirty. All them people that helped you build this yeah. company, and you want to fucking start grabbing guys who can give two fucks about the yeah. CZW name. They just want to have a stepping stone and move on and shit like that. Well, what about the guys that fucking help you build this fucking company, yeah. you know? So we try to have them guys in GCW, and I think that's why GCW works, man, because there's guys who fucking really love this fucking fucking company, man. You seem you really know? loyal. Yeah, very loyal person, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll die for some people, man. You know, I'll fight for some people, man, and I don't fight for a lot of people, you know. I stay out of it, you know, yeah. it's you, but there's a couple people that I will, will fucking really go in for, man, you know. I uh, shout out to Matt Justice too. That's my fucking boy. Um, he's a guy Matt. I'll fucking go in for. I know man. Matt from AIW. Shout out, yes, yeah. AIW is like my uh, second home, man. I love yeah. them people there. Um, they're great people, man. They so um, John Thorne's so good. Yeah, shout out to Thorny, man. Thorny. Um, <clears throat> as soon as I got out of prison, man, Thorny put me right in the mix, man, and used hmm. me nonstop, man. And he wanted me to do a lot of wrestling instead of deathmatch. So I got to be able to pick my ability and start, you know, get get my craft a little better in the ring instead of just, you know, doing deathmatches. And uh, I heard from Thorny, but I had to go, um, I had to do something else. So I couldn't go out there. He wanted to fly me out there. And I tell Thorny, man, man, I'll drive out there. I got no problem driving to Cleveland, man. But I couldn't do that show. But I'll be back out there soon. And I love that place, man. Yeah, good people. They are. I think between this conversation and Dark Side of the Ring, this is going to be a lot of people's time, first time meeting you, first time yeah, figuring so. out. Yeah, which yeah. I think is a great thing. Yeah. So if someone's going to go on YouTube right now mm -hmm. and look at their first Nick Gage match, which match should it be? Wow, one of my first match? No, just what if it's going to be their first match of yours that they see. Oh, shit. <laughs> um. Because after, after listening to this conversation, I really they're going to go look. I really love my um, Ciclope match. I believe it's Tournament Survival. Um, it's, uh, I go one-on-one -on -one with Ciclope. And, and I just love that match, man, because that dude's a machine. And it just made me realize that, like, I fucking can still do this. And I can <laughs> still go hard. And I can fucking... And you want to know a little small uh, fact about that match. Yeah. Is, um, he was... Um, he was the first guy up, so we had a razor board in there, which is, uh, you know, the razor yeah, board, course, yeah. and I took a drop toe hold onto the razor board, and it cut me right down here, and I went in the back, and I was like, damn, why, why did I piss myself or something? But it was blood. My pants are all wet, and I just taped it up, and I wrestled two more rounds with it, oh my still God. bleeding. So, um, so it but, didn't get your femoral artery? 
or um, no, well, I well, was dead. dead yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it got something. It, was, it just would not stop bleeding. But I stopped. I forgot about it because I had That's... to go to the next round. As soon as you're done that, you're mm. you're moving on to the next guy. And I had to wrestle. Uh, God, who did I wrestle after that? Some other fucking. I think Japanese or Mexican dude who goes hard as hell too. And I was just bleeding. And then I wrestled Tremont at the end, which was the cinder block, uh, you know, where we laid the cinder block canvas cinder block match. And he gave me that power bomb through all them light twos, man. And I went in the back, man, and we had showers there at the time. And uh, I fell down in the shower, man. And my wife came in and sat me on a chair. And, and uh, I had to sit in the chair and... I kept nodding off and passing out, and I just lost so much blood. I didn't go to the hospital or nothing. Dude. Um, I just laid on the couch because I had to, uh, my ride was lauded out, so he had to, like, you know, handle all this shit. Yeah, I just yeah. laid on the couch. And we stopped somewhere to get food, and I was in and out of it. And I drank some orange juice, and I ate a little bit of food, and I, I just <laughs> kind of got back to normal. But that was a scary one because I, yeah. I, I, I fell, man, I and... I was in bad shape, you know what I mean? Like, I fell in that shower, man, and we had to get, put me in a seat, and I never had to do that before. So that was a scary one, but I was fucking, that sequel pay match, man, it was okay, fucking so that's awesome. The match. Yeah, it's just one of my favorites, yeah. you know? It comes in, there's just, there's a lot of them. I really liked the match me and my brother did at Break the Barriers back in the day to put CZW on the map. It was a, a ladder match to the fucking staple gun. And it was cool because all them motherfuckers hated on us, man. But they never said any words to us. They never came up to us. They were nice as pie to us in our face. And we had John with us, Zanday with us. So Zanday would have fucking, you know, they were a little intimidated by John. You know what I mean? Yeah. And John, these are my fucking guys, John would say. And so they were like, you know what I mean? But they, I always catch them fucking yapping their fucking mouths on the side and shit. It's that saying in our face. You know what I mean? But uh, we tore it up, man. We put CZW on the map, man, yeah. right there. It was awesome, man. We had, you know, the psychology might not have been good. You mm -hmm. know, it was a lot of spotty shit, but I think that's what we needed to do. Plus, we didn't, you know, we were still greenhorns, man. We didn't really know how to put the fucking story in there yet. But we fucking did that spotty, and they loved it, man. The crowd was going nuts. Yeah, I know we had the match of the night, and, and you know, it helped out. You know, the biggest thing that I take away from this conversation yeah. is you are a real dude. Oh, thanks, Chris. I and you are a that. passionate dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. But you I were also that. a really loyal guy. Yeah. And behind all of this, like you, ha you have a real soft spot in your heart. You do. Yeah, yeah I do, man. Yeah. yeah. I love the ones that love me. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, a lot of people love you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. It's crazy, man. I don't, I don't even know if I would be doing this right now if I wouldn't walk out there and they would be chanting MDK yeah. and shit like that, man. And and MDK started with just them people writing me letters, you know? Keep your head up, man. And it's not like it was like, all right, so I get locked up. I have five years to do. And it's not like the year one, all right, you get all these letters year one, and then year two, uh, they slow down. They never slowed down. Hmm. I just kept getting them from, you know, until I got out. And it just and these people are taking time out of their way to write me a letter, yeah. and get a stamp, and send it to me. I don't know these people, you know what I mean? But There's, you've impacted their lives. Dude, not only that, they sent me money. You wow. know what I mean? Like, and I didn't need money. I had a job, man. And the job paid for my canteen and everything like that. And uh, and and I was just like, well, how can me and my fans be as one? Oh, you know what? We're gonna be a motherfucking gang. Yeah. And then I just, you know, I remember the murder, death, kill. I said that in an interview one time, a promo. I'm going to say, you know what? We're going to be the murder, death, kill gang. Me and my fans is one. Yeah. So everywhere we go, we're going to represent. And that's, you know, and that's how it started, man. And yeah. then it just took off. You know, I had to keep saying it a little bit for them to understand it. But after that, they started chanting that shit. And I don't know if, if, they, if they didn't. Thank God for GCW and thank God for the fans showing up and, and chanting that shit. I don't know if I would be still doing this, hmm. you know? Because if there was no GCW, I would have had to probably do that CZW shit. And I remember I got out of prison. I went to my, I was booked for a CZW show, and I just looked in that locker room, and I was just like, this is not what I remember. Yeah. You know, nobody's fucking talking to each other. They're all over on the side. There's no, like, atmosphere. There's none of that shit going on. 
that it used to go on when, like, Drake Younger was there and all them guys and shit like that, man. It was just, I was like, man, I don't think I could have survived there. I would have yeah. probably, like, got another job or something, you know? Yeah. So, so fucking, thank God for GCW. Thank God for the murder that killed guy. Yeah. You know? This has been one of my favorite conversations ever. Really? Yeah. Oh, this thanks, is so Chris. in depth. Thanks, Chris. Like, man. I mean, thank you. Thank you, no, Nick. No, no, like, no, thank I, you for the time. Yeah, man. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of yours, bro. I watch your show, man. Likewise. Uh, I love when you fucking interview. And you've done so many cool interviews with so many cool dudes. Uh, Rhino was one of my favorite interviews. Yeah, uh, you you did like him by the one. boat. That's Yeah, that's his yeah, burrito. Yeah, I didn't know that. You yeah. know what I mean? I didn't know anything. You would think Rhino's a fucking beast and an animal. Yeah. You know, you, he think he, you think he'd be down in the basement eating raw meat until he, owns he has Big to go Daddy's rest. Boatyard. Yeah, and then you've come to find out, man, he's a boat guy, yeah. man. He's a straight edge guy, and and and, and, and yeah, and it, it's just that uh, I would have never found out if you know you didn't interview him. So that was pretty cool, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, man. I end every interview talking about gratitude. Yeah. So I'm really curious, Nick. What are three things in your life that you're grateful for? Oh, uh, I'm grateful for my wife. Um, um. I'm just grateful for the people that I'm surrounded by right now. And um, what's the third? I'm just grateful for my health, man. Yeah. I'm a healthy dude right now because of all that fucking deathmatch shit and all them light tubes and all that shit that comes out of the tubes and all that glass. I am healthy, man. You know? I, I barely get sick, man. You know, I take care of myself. I just started, started, stop eating red meat. So, uh trying to do that thing i don't know how hard that is you know i'm hearing a lot of things about this plant-based diet you know you know i'm getting up there in age man so i think i gotta switch my stop, diet around stop saying you're only three years older than me yeah stop making it seem like we're old yeah well you know once you hit 40 man you stop know it. shit shit, shit, shit switches a little chris <laughs> you know and and um you know look at tom brady and stuff and like guys like that man yeah, you see that they eat right oh. they see their diet right and, and the way they work out and all of a sudden, they're in their 40s playing, you know, a hard sport. So if I want to continue doing this, I feel like maybe if I switch my diet and I work out differently, and maybe I could keep going, you know? You need to watch this Facebook mini series okay. called Tom vs. Time. It's Tom Brady, like, docu-series yeah. that not that many people know about on Facebook Watch. It will change your whole perspective about all of that stuff. Because in the documentary, he's 39. I think he's, like, 43 now. That guy's a machine. Yes. Yeah. But there was this one story about Tom Brady um, um, that uh, there's a GM, um, I think he was on the Rich Eisen show, that um, they said that uh, he heard the music blast and shit like that, and he came down, and it was Tom Brady on a Friday night in Boston sitting there training, and he's you know he just won his first Super Bowl, and he could be out fucking yeah. partying, he's young and everything like that. And he's got, and he's there training, and he's working on his technique. And then he said that um, the guy was leaving, and he told the guy, "Hey, man, don't let anybody, don't let anybody know I was here." And this is why I don't you know care what, what I mean? football team you cheer for. This is why Tom Brady's the goat. Yeah, yeah, he's the goat, man. Um, he's awesome. I'm a Giants fan, so I love Lawrence Taylor, who is the goat of fucking linebackers. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, it was just, it was, it's a cool story, you know what yeah. I mean? And it motivates me. I try to find little stories like that or little quotes yeah. that'll motivate me in my life. You know, I'm a big, strong believer in that, you know, I, so. What's your, we'll end on this. What's your favorite quote? Mm -hmm. Wow, man, you're going to put me on the spot there. Or what's right? a quote that really speaks to you right now? Um, <clears throat> wow. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that one, Chris. Get back to me on that one. Too many chair shots. <laughs> Too many fucking chair shots. Send me a text. Let you know what's going to happen on that one, Chris? We're going to stop this interview, and then I'm going to come up with that fucking quote. <laughs> um, I had a couple quotes I hung in my locker when I was locked up, man, but I can't remember them right now, man. Do you know who they were from? Uh, just random magazines, probably from Men's Health. I used okay. to get Men's Health when I was in there and stuff, you know, shit like that. You know, I used to get the fucking, uh, who is the big muscle fucking magazines? Flex? Man. Yeah. Ronnie Coleman's yeah. one of my favorite dudes. Yeah. I just watched his documentary on Netflix, it's man. sad, but yeah. yeah. his body's going through it. <laughs> but, uh, 
you know that guy was a machine yeah and, and i'm a strong believer in fucking when you're lifting um the real lifters are gonna get in that fucking squat rack yeah. and lift yeah and some dudes are gonna be afraid of that squat mm -hmm. rack because they don't want to walk like a duck the next day <laughs> but to yeah. stop walking like a duck you got to start you know getting in the squat rack and you got to start hitting your squats man because you know Everybody knows, you know, that, that takes the most testosterone and throws it through your whole body. Yeah. Do the squats, you know. Damn, man. Damn, I want the quote for you. Um, I just want to, um, if we're going to end right here, I just want to give a shout out to my murder, death, kill gang, man. Um, I want to give a shout out to Eastern Bloc. It's going to be hard for them to hear it. And um, I just want to say rest in peace to my uh, tag team partner, Big Nate Hatred. And uh, rest in peace to my brother, Justice Payne. Um you know, I miss my brother, man. Um, I was literally a boarding a flight when someone texted me and said, did you hear about your brother? And he was going through some mental problems with his wife and yeah. all that and stuff. And I thought Chris was just acting up again. And I'm like, no. And then he goes, well, oh, whoa, I don't want to tell you. And I'm like, oh, shit. So he told me. And I got on that flight, man. And I love wrestling so much that... I literally um, wrestled all three of them matches that weekend when I knew my brother just, you know, you know, passed away. So, you know, you know I love this fucking shit when I'm fucking doing yeah. that. And you know he's so, with you. Yeah. Yeah, I feel him. Yeah. You know, I feel him. And that's why I changed up my, my little intro. Um, so, and that's why I try to speak his name anytime I can. Um, but, you know, I'm going to be out here representing for him and my mom and... And every other family member that's passed away, man, until I can't do it no more. Yeah. You know? We're so, grateful you're still here. <laughs> yeah. You know? You know what? They tried to take me, and uh, it didn't work, so I'm still here, you know? <laughs> I'm here for a reason. You know, I sh if, if I was going to die, I was going to die. But for some reason, um, I got saved, and, you know, I'm, I think I'm, I'm here to inspire other people and motivate other people to do good in their lives. Yeah. I feel like that's what I, I'm put on this earth. Now, how am I going to do that? Right now, it's probably through pro wrestling. you know. But I think that um, as I speak to the boys, I noticed that when I went out with the injury, the locker room was kind of a little off in GCW. But when I came back, you could just feel that fucking intensity back um, from the boys. And I just went around all of them and talked to them and kicked it with them. I actually, you know, because I only took one match. Yeah. And Manny Weekend. Usually yeah. I just go. The one with Moxley. Yeah. Well, I just Manny Weekend is like, um, what's, it's different now, but the old yeah. Manny Weekends. COVID changed it, yeah. The old Manny Weekends, you would have show after show after show, and I would take as many as I can. Yeah. But this time I was like, I just want one show, and and, and that that show against uh, uh, RS Pussy. You know what I mean? So I was able to talk to all the boys, man, and they're all like, yo, I'm glad you're back, man, and all that shit and stuff. So I figured that shit out. But I figured I motivated people when I was in prison because I was motivating my boys when we were lifting and everything like that. So I think I, you know, I think I'm a strong motivator and shit like that. And, yeah. You know, I'm going to, you know, so. You lead by example. That's what you do. Yeah. I try to, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes my examples, you know, not the best, but, you know, I try to. But I will fucking, I will give you um, hard work and I will be dedicated yeah you know that's what words i live by right there man yeah. so you know and i always tell the young ones man you know and they always hit me up i do cameos and stuff like that which are awesome by the way yeah. i love cameos man i don't know why i love them <laughs> i don't know how i love them but i love them man and these cameos i would get are so inspiring man it's like wow these people are like sending me these messages and i would just preach man just you know Stay motivated, stay drive, stay driven, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 if you have a problem and you, and you have a mental health problem or anything like that, find someone that you can talk to that loves you and you can really talk to. Because I was one of them guys where I bottled everything up mm. and I would keep it on the inside. Then I realized, man, like I found someone I could talk to, you know, and, and, and it worked, man. You know, I was able to get it all out, man. So if I have little issues in my head, you know, I either go to the gym, which I found fucking is a great stress reliever, yeah, or 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 discuss it, man. Discuss something with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
You know, I was one of them guys that had too much pride to be like, ah, I ain't gonna say anything, man. But man, pride, 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 pride will put you down, man. If you don't fucking talk to somebody. Yeah. So anybody out there who has uh, mental health issues or down or anything like that, find someone that'll that truly loves you. And it might not be someone like your brother or sister, man. It might be a friend. It might be someone you just meet or something like that, man. But just find someone like that and and just have a combo, man. You know, it don't have to be some crazy combo. You know, start small. We'll be able to get that out of your chest, get that out of your head, man. It's yeah. gonna work. Yeah, you know, I'm a strong believer in that too, man. Yeah, to be able too. to talk to somebody, yeah, and everything like that, and it's great to see in in 2021 that going to a therapist or or discussing shit like that, it's starting to be acceptable now. Yeah, going back in the day, it was like a man was like, yeah, like you're, a oh, pussy. you're going to a shrink, yeah, yeah, you're a pussy, you're going to a shrink, yeah, who the fuck are you, man, the fuck up, yeah. To now, it's like kind of getting accepted. Yeah, which it's almost awesome. commendable. Like, oh, you go to a therapist? Oh, yeah. me too. Yeah, which is awesome, man. Yeah. You know, I, which is dope, you know. So, you know, um, you know, I'm able to talk to a couple people, which is dope, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and a lot of wrestlers, man, I could talk to, man. You know, I became friends with a lot of guys once I got out of prison, man. You know, they look up to me and shit like that. So it's cool as hell. I really appreciate your time here. Yeah, no problem. This man. has been such a great conversation. Thank you for being so open, so yeah. honest about yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I am, man. Um, but I like at the start, you're like, nothing's off limits. I'll talk about whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm an open book, man, and I'm comfortable with myself and everything like that. You know, everybody knows my history. Everybody knows my background. You know, I did something stupid, but I strongly believe that I wouldn't be the person I am now if I didn't go through that situation. Yeah, you know, and I just took all that fucking positivity, and 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 used it to my advantage, and just kicked all that negativity to the curb, man. Yeah. You know, and it worked out so far. You know, <laughs> you know, it's great, man. You yeah. know, it's just everybody's hitting me up, man. You know, you ready to come back? You ready to fucking wrestle? You ready to come back? It's just awesome, man. You know. Yeah. So, Chris, I appreciate you, man. You know, being, thank a, you. being a dope dude, being a cool guy, man. Um, so thank you, man. It's my pleasure. Yeah. No, Seriously. It's my pleasure too, man. Thank you. Seriously. <laughs> um, you're welcome anytime at GCW. If you want to come to a show, you're more than welcome to come in the back. I love it. If anybody fucking gives you issues, you fucking say, <laughs> yo, go get Gage. <laughs> and I will handle that shit for you. Okay. I'll, I'll remember that. that shit for you. I hope anybody, nobody gives me issues, but yeah, if anybody gives you problems, you go, "Yo, where's Gage at?" <laughs> yeah, we make sure we handle that real quick, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you too, <laughs> Thanks, Chris, man. man. Thank you, man. Uh, shout out to all the wrestlers out there, man. Follow your dreams and keep doing what you want to do, man. Just always work hard and stay dedicated, man. Stay focused, and you can accomplish anything. I'm a strong believer in if you put your mind, body, and soul together, you're unstoppable, man. This is Nick fucking Gage. Shout out to my murder, death, kill gang. Shout out to Eastern Bloc and shout out to the hate club. You know what it is. MDK all motherfucking day. <laughs>